Now that we've got a good understanding of our wavetable synth, let's actually start putting this into practice and building up our sounds for our track. So with any track, let's start with our kick drum. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place a note on our C3 and we'll just use that as our default value. I'm just going to have a simple 16th note and we can either just play it on the keyboard or sometimes it might be easier for me just to have this looping through. So what we can actually do is just have a simple sine wave. So I'm going to switch off my oscillator one and switch on our sub. From there, what we're going to have to think about is what are we going to need in our kick? So if we're going for a kind of 808, 909 sound, we're going to have to have some sort of modulation to the pitch and then a pitch bend. So what we can utilize for that is an envelope generator applied to our pitch. So we're going to go to our matrix tab and turn up our pitch. So at the moment we're going up 48 tones. At the moment we're going up 48 semitones. So that would be four octaves. And I'm going to leave it as going that full. But what I'm going to do is use envelope two and the actual peak value to apply how much that's going to happen. So let's just have a listen to what it's doing right now. So obviously we need to play our clip. Straight up, that's too high. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take down my transpose to take it into more the lower octaves. So we're gonna to wanna to work around about the zero octave. If you're not too sure where this is, it's very useful to use your spectrum analyzer. And I put it to full screen just by double clicking on the black. And I'm just changing the block value to the highest. So it, it just has a bit more resolution, basically. So let's just have a look at what it's doing now. You can actually see the initial pitch is all the way up here. And then it's pitching down to round about our D2. Our kicks tend to be between D sharp zero and probably as high as D1, depending on what genre we're working in. Um, for those of you working in kind of more club music, you kind of want to go and have it around about F sharp to A sharp because most clubs are kind of tuned around the G0 and A0. So to do that and get it closer to that value, we're going to take down our transposition and we can just watch it happening while I've got this loop going. So we're getting closer. So you can kind of see the pitches ending around about C, what was that, E0? Yeah, so I'm going to put it up a little bit so it ends around about the G. So that'll do just now. Obviously, it's not quite sounding right because our envelope isn't set. So we're going to make sure we're on our envelope too. And I'm going to take the attack right in and let's take the sustain down because at the moment, it's sustaining at a very, very kind of middle range value. So I want to take this right down. And already we've got our kind of kick sound. We can then utilize how far this pitch is going up. So we may not want it to go all the way as high as this, but taking down our peak value in our values tab will allow us to decide where that's going to sit. It's sounding nice there. Now we're going to move back to our time tab. This is going to allow us to decide how long our pitch bend is going to last for. And what we're going to use now is our decay time. This is the amount of time it takes for this pitch bend to go from full value there is our tack or our initial peak stage to reach our sustain stage, which is zero. Mm. 
And as you can hear, there's a nice range where it works within. And it's kind of around about very small millisecond value to, I think the most we're gonna to wanna to go is probably like one second. So in thinking about that, what we can do is set up um, some macros so we can adjust this kick for, a tra for different tracks. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna group these two together. So now we're gonna have our macros. If we click on our macro um, tab here and I'm gonna apply the value to our macro one so we can choose how much pitch we're gonna have in it. And then I'm going to choose the decay for how how tight or how loose our pitch decay is. And because I know I'm not going to want to go this high, I'm going to click map, which allows us to map the ranges of these kicks, which allows us to map the ranges of these macros. So I'm just going to pull this in until it sounds nice. Probably about there, and let's do the same for the minimum value. It's probably fine there. So the kick's sounding really good. Now we can move on to our amplitude tab. Let's have the sound starting right away and we're going to take the sustain right down. And again, we could probably macro this. Obviously, that's way too tight. So I'm going to go into my map tab and take this minimum range. So I think that may be quite useful for some kind of genres. That's fine there. So we've got our basic sound. We've got the punch and the nice sub to the sound. Let's now look at adding in a click. So what I can do is put on my oscillator one and move to maybe some white noise or we have our noise tab. So I'm gonna start on our noise tab and just flip through until we find one that may work. And as you can hear, none of these seem to really have a nice pleasing tone which would work on a kick. So what we can do is actually go into our matrix tab and send the the volume, this gain of oscillator one to our envelope. So then we can actually tighten the sound up. So I'm gonna have a very quick attack, no sustain, and pull the decay in. So already we've got a better click sound. Now we can actually flick through the different wave positions on our different um, wave tables. And I can take out the decay if I want a little bit more click to be present. Kind of apply some of our FM to this sound. Pull the tuning down. Um, what I'm going to do is map the value, so the peak value. We can call this click, and then we can have the click decay time.
and obviously we're going to go into our range. Probably can be quite interesting there, and then we can just pull it in a bit, down a bit, and let's rename these as well. Now let's beef up the sound a little bit, and to do that, I'm just gonna apply one of the circuits and drive the filler. Let's change it to poly. So let's change it to mono rather than poly. Pull down the volume a bit, cause we could maybe add in our um, pedal to add a bit of distortion to the sound. And let's have a look at our amplitude release. That could be a useful one to add as a macro. So this is once the note's played, how long it lasts for. It's a bit long. So now we've got our sound, let's look at adding our pedal in. So I'm gonna drop the pedal in our audio rack. I'm gonna use overdrive and turn up the gain. And then I'm gonna hit sub to let through the frequencies in, this, in the low end. Sounds very nice. And if I would like, I can add in our uh, drum bus and maybe the echo to add some nice effect. Let's just take the trim down a little bit. Let's add our compressor in. And then let's see what frequency we're working at. So we're running about G, so that's right. Let's turn up this amount. And take the decay in, so it's just for the beginning of the sound. Obviously we've got way too much. Maybe a bit of crunch to the mid-range. It's too much. So now we've got a nice big heavy kick that will be very useful for our track. Uh, what I'm going to do is for our last macros, apply the dry wet for our pedal and our drum bus. Now I'm just going to call this big wave kick and clicks the save button so we can save it for later. Now that we've got a kick, let's move on to creating a snare. <laughs> 